Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of Exotics Unplugged. Uh, this time uh, mine is Tor speaking. Uh, I will be talking about a new concept that we call real-time controllers. Um, introduced in the latest version of Exocets version 303. Uh, this is a new set of features uh, that enables you to run Exocets.net on iOS 8 or Windows 2012. Windows 8 based platforms. By just installing the package name Exocket MVC into your HP.NET MVC 4 file project, this enables you to take advantage of most of the features found in Exockets. Uh, and we call the concept, as I mentioned, real time MVC controllers. This is some kind of experiment that we have been playing on with. Um, Playing on with it for a while, and this is the first version. I hope you like what you see. So let's start by adding the necessary packages to our sample application. This time it's a MVC 4 pilot project, as I, as I mentioned. Um, we need to install a package called xsockets.mvc. MVC, not MVC. Uh, so let's do it. And as we are using web application, we also use the JavaScript a <coughs> need the JavaScript API. Uh, so I add those packages to our solution. So our solution is now prepared to do real-time communication on MVC. So I also created a controller and uh, this is a regular MVC controller named chat controller which points out a view result or a view named index. This is a simple view containing a few HTML5 elements or HTML elements. It also contains some JavaScript. Uh, inside this JavaScript uh, code we will put our client code that connects to the real-time controller of ours. Our controller uh, as I mentioned is a regular MVC controller, uh, but we will need to change this to Xsockets controller base, uh, which derives from the MVC controller and enables the real-time functionality. So let's say that this Xsockets controller base is the type of real-time time chat. Real-time chat doesn't exist yet, and uh, <coughs> yet, so we'll need to create it. And this is a Xsockets controller. So we can now build the application. And this is now a real-time controller. But we also need to initialize the Xsockets server. This is done by calling the plugin framework of ours and getting the export of Relay container, which is quite similar to the server container we have. Uh, and it, that enables hosting on non-IS8 applications, application servers such as IS7 or standalone applications or in Windows Azure uh, worker roles. So we can look now uh, when we start the application if this container is aware of our uh, MVC controller or rhythm controller. Uh, let's have a look at container which is the actual relay container. It now contains four plugins. Those plugins are the real-time controllers. The last one should be, yeah, as you see, it's real-time chat. So it's now known to our um, environment. We're stopping the debugger and let's see if we can connect to the real-time controller of ours. So this is the real-time controller which returns the view and it also enables us to connect to a real-time chat via the same URI. Uh, so I'm cheating here and I'll be adding some JavaScript code. Our application is running on localhost uh, port 5457 and the controller is named chat. Uh, in the most common cases when you are using Xsocket to point out the Xsocket controller in the URI website URL here and uh, in our case we are pointing on the, on the actual MVC controller as you see and 
you say when you are open and have a connection to our Windows MMC controller, show us the, the connection information in the console. So let's uh, remove the breakpoint, it's removed, and start the debugger. And let's bring those old windows away. And as you see now, if I refresh, we will have a new connection in the console. This is a client identity. And if I do a refresh, you can see that this client identity changed for each time, but the storage grid maintains the same. And the client type is RSE 6455, which is the protocol implementation uh, we are using on the server side. So uh, let's add some JavaScript logic to our page. Uh, sorry, this is the index page we need. Um, as we have a chat, uh, we will need to have some JavaScript code that when somebody enters some text within this input field, we want to send it to the real-time controller. And in this case, we can do it like this. Let's say when somebody hits key down on the keyboard on this input element and the key code is uh, in new line, let's publish a message on the WebSocket on the chat controller with the topic chat message with some properties name text. And that, let's do it this way instead. It's much more convenient for C sharp developers. So now we will be sending this information from the client. So let's start and see if it works. We can bring up the debugger and see that we are now uh, having a connection. We also have a connection created, established to our controller. And let's say we are sending test and we can now inspect the frames sent. As you see here, uh, the controller says there is no uh, meth action defined for the current event and cannot dispatch to any anonymous events except if not already in the on message method in the controller. So our event name was chat message and we also sent a model called text containing a string. So let's stop the debugger and go to our controller. And in this case we are now connected to the real time controller, uh, which is this class. Let's create a new method here uh, that reflects uh, our publish uh, or our publish from the JavaScript and the post chat message. And remember that we sent a object. And so let's use a class here. Message will be much more better. Message. Uh, as XSocket support model binding, we can create a model instead of passing arguments um, to um, the method. And let's say that this class has a string called text like this. Uh, this corresponds to the JSON object we are assembling inside the publish. This is the actual method. This is the object. This is a property text which is reflected by the model here. And let's say when this method is invoked, let's send this message, chat message to all. And let's say send to all. And we will we'll say this message will go out to all users subscribing to on message. That pretty much the thing. So let's start. And we can now inspect the communication once again. We are now connected. And you can see that there is a connection established and we can do a couple of tests by sending some text to the controller. Uh, there was no method for chat message. Uh, something is wrong here chat message yeah i suppose that you guys see the problem here uh, i wrote chat message with 3s that was not a good idea so let's remove one of those and compile again even the sun has 
box. Um, so let's say once again do a test. Now look at the inspection. Yeah. Uh, now it's sent and it's dispatched to the method called chat message on the controller. We can also say on the controller uh, set the waypoint here. Uh, the waypoint there. Sorry, my mind is causing me some. Yeah, sorry. Uh, let's go back to Pro and say test once again. As you see, the waypoint was hit. And we can inspect the class, and we will have a text called test with, with a value of test. Um, but as you see, we are just sending information. Nothing is sent back to the client, as the client is not subscribing to the topic. And the topic we were sending back on was on message. So let's say give or establish a subscription when we are connected to the controller let's say on chat message hopefully it will reflect on message is the name here as you see on message let's, let's go back and say websocket on on message this is a callback and uh, object and let's create a paragraph set the in a text to text and it was a just this and prepare the information to chat messages. Uh, let's go back to the client. Do a reload. I uh, also need to start the application. Sorry, like this. Much more better ID. And let's have a look in the debugger. And say test. So we're hitting the, hit the breakpoint. We can release it. Go back and say hello. We can also now bring up our window and say world. Now we have a chat. And for each time something is sent to the with a controller, this method will be invoked, and this method sent to all will pass it back to everyone listening to the on message topic. So um, that's pretty much the thing. Of course, you can add more methods to the controller. Of course, you can create long running controllers or, or dispatch information between different controllers uh, almost all of the features that you have in the Xsocket sub container is also available in the Xsocket controller base or MVC package so uh, thank you for listening and uh, please give us some feedback on our developer forum or just shoot us an email uh, place a comment on this video uh, have a nice evening and thank you for listening for almost 14 minutes um, have a nice day. Goodbye.